Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. It is Wednesday, and all of our guests today, including Jeff Patterson, standing by, brought to you by Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. As we bring in Jeff Patterson from Zakara and Price and the Rink White Podcast, Canucks hosting the Ducks tonight at Rogers Arena. Jeff, thanks for doing uh, this. Uh, how, how are you? Hopefully better than me. Yeah, did you get some water there in the commercial break? I hope so. Uh, I tweeted this out earlier, guys. Uh, the last time the Ducks were in town was Kevin Bieksadite when he gave the big speech in the locker room about culture. Does that not feel like eight lifetimes ago now? Yeah. Well, how, how, what do they, they – they play the Ducks and Kings. I think you tweeted this out. Six of the last 18 games? That's a lot. It's a – it's a really weird schedule this year when you think that the Canucks have not been to Southern California. Like, we're talking going back, Smite Division partners all those years. They're, they're down the coast. They haven't made a Southern California visit yet this year, and they haven't been to the mullet in Arizona either, and they've still got two games there left against the Coyotes, including the final game of the regular season. So, a bit of a weird schedule. And also, one other quirk that I just discovered this morning when I was uh, looking at this matchup tonight, Anaheim comes to town tonight. The Ducks are the first team all season to have played in Seattle the night before they play in Vancouver. Like when Seattle came into the league, you figured, hey, this would be a break probably for both teams. It would cut both ways that they'd get some tired teams on back-to-backs. Here they are, the first time all season an opponent is playing in Vancouver after playing in Seattle. The weird part in all that is the only team to have played in Seattle one night and Vancouver the next is the Canucks back in October <laughs> when they played in Seattle and then got uh, got their first win of the season against the Kraken and followed it up with a win against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So every team's got scheduling quirks, but uh, that certainly uh, is one of them for the Vancouver Canucks. If the schedule makers are indeed back east, back in Toronto, maybe they don't know Seattle and Vancouver are close to each other. Yeah. That, that could be a, an explanation. Hey, uh, Jeff, Arthur Seelov's back down in uh, Abbotsford. He was an emergency call-up because Colin Delia got ill. What do you think the Canucks have in him? I think they've got a keeper uh, and not a goalkeeper. Uh, they've got a guy that, uh, you know, he's not going to be 22 until uh, later this month. And so when you look at, I mean, I know you guys talked about it yesterday, but the first guy since Kirk McLean to win games for the Vancouver Canucks at the age of 21. But beyond that, if you go in the last 10 years and you look at goalies that have won games in the National Hockey League at 21 or under, it's a really impressive list. Starts with Andre Vasilevsky. You've got John Gibson. Uh, you've got... Uh, Matt Murray, you've got Alexander Gorgiev. Like These are guys, obviously, that started young. Carter Hart's on that list as well. Guys that started young and have progressed. Now, there's no guarantee that Arthur Silas is going to join them, but what that tells me is that he is tracking along those same lines as a guy that was up to the challenge of the National Hockey League. And you think, too, in his five games, Donnie, He's faced the Boston Bruins yeah. and the New York Rangers, two of the top teams in the National Hockey League. The Rangers, his debut, okay, he looked a little bit shaky, as anybody would. But since then, man, he has settled in, and he looks athletic. Uh, some of those saves the other night against Nashville, the one-off Matt Duchesne going post-to-post -post and covering the bottom of the net. Uh, the stage certainly doesn't look too big for him. So, absolutely, for a guy that was a sixth-round pick in 2019, and here we are four years later, and he already has five games of NHL experience under his belt, uh, he looks like a guy that clearly Ian Clark went to bat for, wanted him in the organization, and has worked with him. And so the future looks bright. And, hey, you can never have too much goaltending in your system. I still think uh, another year in the American Hockey League to play and play a lot and be the guy uh, rather than sitting on the bench and being the backup at the NHL level, I think that's what's best for him. But I tell you what, I also think that he has worked his way into this conversation, and he may force the Canucks' hand to be the backup here to Thatcher Demko next season. All right, Jeff, uh, you're Rick Tockett. You know, we, we don't have many games left. Uh, what's, what's the goal? What, what, what is the plan here? We've been through this with Travis Green, uh, Bruce Boudreaux, and now here we are with uh, uh, Rick Tockett. What, what's the plan the rest of the way if you were running the team? Well, I, I, I guess I, I want to see the young guys. I want to see them get opportunities. Yeah. And what I've liked the last couple of nights is that, you know, Pud Coles and, and Kravtsov were out there late in the third period. They got scored on. But they also got shifts in overtime. And so I think other coaches, other times of the season, that would have been it for the night. Uh, would have been, uh, you know, take your seat on the bench and we'll let others uh, do it from here. I, look, Elias Pettersson is pushing for 40 goals and 100 points. And uh, he's going to want to play and play a lot. But I do think that they've got to sort of balance this between 
you know, in the moment and guys chasing individual goals and ultimately what's left for or best for the organization, a win tonight and they catch St. Louis and Philadelphia. And all of a sudden they've got five wins in the last eight games. But the problem is if you're playing Pedersen and you're playing Hughes a lot, those guys are so talented. Mm-hmm. They take over hockey games. They're going to get the job done. And now with Thatcher Demko back or when Arthur Silovs has been in there, they're getting saves that they weren't getting for six weeks from Christmas uh, up and through the, the trade deadline. And so all of a sudden, Demko, Hughes, Pedersen, like that's a pretty good spine to any hockey club. And I mean, he, Elias Pedersen, I don't think that was his best night the other night, yet opens the scoring with a brilliant goal, closes the scoring in the shootout. Absolutely, you know, his fingerprints all over that victory for the Canucks as they were in the 3-2 overtime win in St. Louis a couple of weeks ago. So that's the danger. If you play Elias Pedersen and play him a lot, you play Quinn Hughes and play him a lot, those guys are going to impact the hockey game, usually in the Canucks' favor. So I do want to make sure that these young guys get their opportunities, but as long as they're getting into double digits and ice time, I, I don't think anybody can really complain. Tockett's still going to ride his best guys. They're going to get power play time. They kill penalties. And so it's just a question. Hughes, I'd like to see them scale him back a little bit. I, I do worry that maybe they're going to run him into the ground, but uh, the way that he's playing, uh, he's thriving on the ice time. I mean, he's playing some of his best hockey uh, that he have, has in the National Hockey League. So uh, it doesn't seem like the workload is too much for Quinn Hughes these days. Uh, I was going to ask you about Hughes. Uh, I, I don't think people realize how, you know, we are lucky to have this guy. He's going to obliterate every scoring record uh, imaginable. I mean, I don't think anybody will ever touch any of his scoring records in Vancouver. Look, at he's already got 60 points in 59 games this year, Jeff. Like, I don't think he gets enough recognition around the league, especially the Eastern media. But this guy is one special player. Yeah, and... The numbers bear it out, Rick, and I think Thomas Grants wrote a piece the other day about, you know, the Canucks have outscored their opponents at even strength by 20 when Quinn Hughes is on the ice. Like, all he does is tilt the ice in the Canucks' favor. The problem is, when he's not on the half the game that he's not on the ice, the Canucks have been outscored by like 40. And so this is the problem for the Vancouver Canucks. And Philip Hronik is going to come in here. I don't think Philip Hronik is going to be a magician, but Philip Hronik can be part of the solution of taking shifts and taking ice when Quinn Hughes isn't out there and just trying to settle things down so that the Canucks aren't getting bombarded when Quinn Hughes isn't on the ice. But I think that might be the biggest measure of his value to this hockey club. Obviously, the individual points, he's just so talented. The points, you know, they they drip off his back. But it's when he's not out there, what does his team look like? And we've seen it all season long, whether it's OEL, whether it's Tyler Myers, whether it's other guys. Uh, you know, the Canucks just fish the puck out of their net repeatedly. So bringing Heronic in, I think that's going to help. Getting Ethan Bear back, that should help. Uh, and I know you're asking about some of these other guys, the yeah. AHLers. Uh, yeah. I vote for Christian Willannon without a doubt. Yeah, he, he, look, he looks the part. Like He looks polished. He looks poised. He's having an incredible season in the AHL. And I think we're seeing some of that. Like He looks confident. I, I love the way he, he skates. He's getting second power play duty. And also, when you look, the Canucks are out shooting opponents and out scoring opponents when Christian Willandon's out on the ice at even strength. So he's holding his own in limited and sheltered minutes. I get it, but he can play on the power play for you. And the other thing about Christian Willandon, and I think this kind of gets lost. Like, he, look, he's a fringe guy who's trying to carve out a, a job in the NHL. But, you know, to this point, he's played 76 NHL games over four organizations. He's got 22 points in 76 games. Like, he hasn't even played an entire, you know, full NHL season. And is still bad as 22 points. OEL's the second highest scoring Canuck defenseman this season. He's got 22 points. So I think if you gave this guy an opportunity to play a full year and second power play duty, like there might be more there. Uh, the danger is he's not a restricted free agent at the end of the season. Yeah. These final games, they're not just him trying to show to the Canucks. Like This is a showcase for the other 31 teams in the National Hockey League as well. So uh, I think if the Canucks, you know, they got the Breeze Boy deal done. I know you were talking about Juleson earlier, Rick. Uh, it may not be as simple as, hey, Christian, here's a contract for you. Uh, he may get, you know, he may open some eyes around the National yeah. Hockey League that lead to an opportunity elsewhere. So I'll be curious to see where it goes from here. But I think in the short term, he's been terrific in yeah. a limited role and does not look out of place at the National Hockey League level. Jeff, uh, very quickly, uh, you're doing a show. Your partner starts uh, coughing. Obviously, he hasn't got time to get the cough switch. What do you, what do, you do? You're a broadcast veteran. I throw a commercial. Here's the problem. I didn't know how long the coughing fit was going to be. Usually well, what difference it's like this. That Hold on a second. What Usually it's like this. Make? We got a button here. I go like this. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I didn't know he was going to go off for or, 15 seconds. Or you could take over. How about that? Hey, I know your partner, Jeff. I'd throw him out the window. Anyways. 
Thanks, Jeff. Well, I'm just in the podcast. In one of the podcast videos, I just start over. I guess is that that's the simple answer. Yeah. you guys don't have that. We option. don't have that. So yeah, just just in case people were wondering, it is live television. <laughs> Jeff, yeah, thanks for this. I, I can vouch for you. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for this. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks.